last session. Um, I have some friends here. Hey, um, I have some friends here. We are going to try to have a conversation about, um, well, we call it, uh, the title we came up with is Why Blogging Still Matters. But uh, it is really mostly about uh, the future of, of using the internet to, to, to communicate. Um, we all, as I said yesterday, we all met because of blogging. We all, uh, we, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for blogging. Uh, we're not going to, 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 dis to talk about uh, how good the old blogging days were. Um, no, 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 but... Um, oh, weren't the old blogging days really great? Never well, mind. Okay, yeah. we're not talking about Yeah, we're that not. The, the, the point is we're not talking about it. <laughs> Um, so we are going to talk about how good the, the future blogging days are going to be. And uh, many of you I see are, I, are bloggers, and uh, I know you are, and I totally expect you to join this conversation. So it's not about us here. We don't have anything particularly special to say. Uh, I mean, we have some ideas, but uh, uh, we are just uh, bloggers like uh, you are. So uh, there are microphones, uh, and uh, please uh, do uh, use them. Um, just to get things started, uh, I would like, because yes, it is about people, it's a bit, it is about connection, but it is also about tools. I mean, sometimes there are little things that come about, and then suddenly, changed the way um, we use technology. And uh, building new tools, I mean, some people, so somebody kind of thinks that uh, the, the era of building new things is over. I mean, now there is Facebook is everywhere, Twitter is everywhere, you know, we, we can't do anything new because they kind of control innovation, which is absolutely not true. As you said yesterday, we actually build on top of the, them. Uh, so I would like to start today with a short demo okay. of the tool that uh, you just uh, created, awesome. a little portrait. Love to. So if we can put it up so can, on yeah. the screen. Is it on? Cool. So this is called Little Pork Chop, which was the code, the code name was Pork Chop when it was in development. And it was only in development for like less than a week. It was one of these things where um, a couple of guys on Twitter thought that it would be a good thing for an outliner. And I would thought about it for a while. And I have outliners, and I love to do them. Um, and I thought about it for a while, and I decided that it was actually a lot simpler. So the idea is, let's say you want to write something and post it to Twitter, but it doesn't fit in 140 characters. So this is an attempt to solve that problem. And so, yes, you can see it on the screen. And so the first thing you have to do is sign on to Twitter. So this creates the connection between the application and Twitter. And I don't want to use my main account because, so I'll use, I have an account called Twittergram that I use for this stuff. And you can see now I'm signed on and here it's going to Twittergram. And so I'm going to type, uh, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Um, anybody, any other songs that people know? Or Volare, or no. what? <laughs> um, this is the dawning. No, it's I have to get over 104. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to, I, get, I don't know all the words to Volare, but I have to oh, definitely go over. You can copy and, and paste. Is Volare, oh, oh, Volare, oh, oh, Volare, oh, oh. <laughs> just, uh, Well, that actually would be kind of easy. So I go Volare, oh, yes. Volare, oh, oh, yeah. oh. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know the way? <laughs> the way to. You have to more, type more than 140 characters if, if you're going to get the idea. To San Jose. I'm going. Do you know where San Jose is? 140 characters never felt so long. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's no point to this. Uh, I'm going back to find. There we go. You see how it just wrapped some peace of mind in 
San Jose, blah, blah, blah. And so I could go back and let's do this. I'll delete some of the text. Do you see how it this is a little bit easier than if I was doing it by hand? And it, it's nice. Actually, let me try this. I'm go copy and paste some text. I'm sure I have something out here that I can do. These are blog posts. This is my blogging tool. I snuck that in here, huh? I was talking to a guy from Wired this morning, and he asked me, what's the future of blogging? And I said, it's Fargo, of course. There. <laughs> I'm looking for some paragraphs here. Um, give me a second. I know we have 40 minutes. I'm not going to use it all up. <laughs> here we go. Watch this. OK, so I'll select and then copy. and then go over to Little Pork Chop. Let's do this. I'll just wipe all this shit out, this stuff out. Sorry. Oops. There. That's better. This would be a better example of a use. So I've written a sort of paragraph length blog post and it's broken it up. Then I click the button. Okay. What? Yeah, it's, oh, I did a lot of sort of hacking and refining on this thing to really smooth it out. So I'm not going to click the button. Okay. And we're just going to now it's, every time it moves down, it's tweet, there it goes, it's all out. And so all these things are linked up and I just click on it and it takes me over to Twitter. And it also arranges them in a thread so that you can read them in sequence. So people love it. I mean, it, it's because it's a, little, it's a little tweak and it makes Twitter better. I don't, this is nothing earth shaking. But it's almost proof that there's more that you could do with Twitter than what Twitter has done. And I have found out after I released this that this is against the rules, that you're not actually allowed to do this. But so far, they don't seem to have a problem with it. So anyway, that's a little, little pork chop. Something new. Thanks. It's, it's proof that maybe there's something more to blogging after all. So yep. Yeah. Very cool. It's cute. Right. Yeah, it's cute. I it's mean, cute. it's uh, uh, and you said that it's this is going to bring Twitter down or yes, uh, Twitter is now out of business this officially is, because this, this is exists. He's joking because that's what people. This you know, there was all this controversy. Uh, there was an article about it in TechCrunch, um, one in PC Magazine, uh, where they basically said, "Well, this is the end of Twitter. This this can't be allowed to exist." Um, but it's not the end of Twitter. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> You so, thanks. You have been blogging on, on, on Facebook. I have. How do you like it? Well, that, that I mean, and Paul was just you know, picking up on the fact that I, I started basically doing blog posts into Flickr, into, into Facebook rather. And um, that was just partly because that was where people were. Um, that was where the energy was, that was where I got more reactions to whatever I did. And I had been posting links to my blog in Google Plus, actually it was, and somebody said, it's kind of unfair to expect me to move from where I am, where I'm comfortable, to go somewhere else to read what you think I should read, sort of thing. So, um, so what I now do, and it was interesting when you were saying, that, Dave, about being able to make it in some way possible to blog and tweet and whatever else in different places and, and integrate it into the, the platforms. Because at the moment, I copy and paste and from one to the other. Um, but it was partly also me realizing that blogging is, I think, more a way of looking at things than it is to do with technology. And you know, having done it for so long, the process of just noticing more because I have a blog thinking more about what I've seen and what it means, then trying to formulate it and then do a blog post. Even if I don't do the blog post, I'm still benefiting from, from that process. And then if you get good at it and you put a blog post out that gets reactions um, that you then respond to. So in other words, it's not just that one push out and see what they say. It's then you react back to it. And it's that kind of, you know, I worried somebody the other day by saying that it almost feels biological now because I've been doing it so long and for so much of the time that it's ideas coming and going in, in and out of my skull. And some of the synapses fire inside and some fire outside. So I think that's what's interesting you know, about Dave's tool and whatever else, that, that 
I don't think the, you know, people talk about blogging being dead. I don't think, and also this sort of relates back to some of the concerns that were expressed earlier. That all of this, I think, is about extending out to reach out to connect with other people, and to be able to do more with other people and be able to be smarter because we've connected with other people, whether it's around our passions or around our, our data. It's that willingness to open up, reach out, be vulnerable that you sort of learn by doing blogging that is where the power lies, I think, whatever we call it. Yeah, no, we were discussing yesterday about how, uh, how much blogging is actually a process and a way of thinking in terms of, I mean, I don't, almost not blogging anymore. I mean, I write a post maybe once a month, um, but I still blog all the time. I mean, I still compose posts as I, you know, experiencing. And, and, and you have been, Adriana, had one of the very first blogs, p popular political blogs. In, oh, without in much reminiscing, right? <laughs> um, I think on, on one level, I think most people talk about blogging as um, publishing and distribution for the individual. And in that sense, that's absolutely true. But I think there is a more fundamental level. Well, but the, the obvious one was that I, I, as an individual, could publish and distribute without asking for permission, without having to uh, go to an institution to, to do that, and that, that was pretty revolutionary. But what I think um, the f fundamental, more fundamental nature of blogging, which is the one I think uh, ought to go forward and is not necessarily a very widespread on the web these days, is people solving their own problem, is that what Dark Souls calls demand side supplying itself. And uh, for me, blogging definitely was solving a problem. It was um, writing about things that were not written about in any, anywhere else. So, okay, so let's write about it. It was political blogging back in 2001, where really that, there wasn't uh, much variety in the, in the media. And um, so there were people like Dave who made it possible that crossed that line from being able to, having to code and not having to know much HTML and just basic stuff. And we learned, and the pain threshold was, um, was much um, lower mm -hmm. or higher, whatever. There was, yeah. was more pain. Yeah, yeah it was more, more pain. I mean, you know, I remember stickers you know, with HTML to make sure I can embed the links. And that was all fine. That was actually part of the empowerment. Um, and now, blogging is just provided by platforms, unless you use WordPress. So the the, the, the underlying thing about people solving their own problems, that's what I want to see going to, to the future. It's not blogging per se. There are many ways of publishing and distributing, and we, can, we, we quite correctly need to say it shouldn't be done by vast platforms and it shouldn't all be done that way. And, um, but that's, that's why you're solving a problem. This is, this is you doing it as an individual. You might be an institution of sorts, but not, not the way, let's say, um, companies are or other, you know. So, so um, one of the reasons I do quantify itself is that this is the only corner of the web that I see where people still are solving problems for themselves. They don't need any vast platforms to do that. And I think, yeah, there, need, there needs to be more of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it. So if you do, tell me. <laughs> oh, please. Can interrupt I, can us. I say something just to no, that. absolutely. Um, I also see it as being somewhat subversive, that it allows the sources, the people that were normally being quoted by journalists, to go straight to the people who uh, you know, the journalists are writing to, which enforces sort of a new discipline on journalism. Because, um, and it also changes the structure of journalism. Because of, you know, in the old days, what a reporter would have to do would, you know, uh, call up five people, get some quotes, maybe do a little bit of market research to get some numbers, string it all together, write a lead, write a closer, and that's what a story was. Um, now, the, hopefully the process begins by doing some Google searches, finding, you know, lots of authorities, um, reading what they have to say, and, you know, instead of talking to five people, they can be informed, you know, by a lot more, or as many more as they want. So it makes it possible for journalism to be a lot better. Um, and it also means that we don't have to rely on journalists to get our story out. Um, and it also made it possible, I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted blogging was because I was a Mac software developer 
uh, at the time, and the conventional wisdom amongst reporters was uh, that there was no new Mac software. And you'd meet them at a cocktail party and say, well, why don't you write about this or that or the other thing? And, you know, they would say, well, everybody knows that there's no new Mac software, but they would be actually using the tools themselves. They were all Mac users. Um, so they're, re not, they're playing a in a different world. They're writing con the conventional wisdom story, and uh, the hope was, and this was sort of the dream, the idealistic dream about blogging, it didn't actually turn out that way, but was that, well, we would turn everything upside down and all of a sudden it would all be based on the truth. Well, it didn't actually happen. Well, it, um, it, it, that was part but of it. But it could happen. I was going to say, it could still, it still happen. It still could happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because, because I, think, I think part of it was because even just the language of social media kept people in the thinking that it was media, that it was, it, stay, it stayed broadcast. And so much of the social media stuff is still not about any intent to actually listen or react to other people. And I was, I was thinking actually about a conversation, I think it was with you, Anne, about um, the bits of our lives that we care enough about to retain management of. And, and it was around the fact that we still care enough about our financial details to have our own content, if you like, whereas with, with other aspects of our lives, we've kind of devolved it to professionals, including the idea of communication. And that's why I think you're right. It's not about just communicating about stuff. It's about working out things about our lives collectively using whatever platform. So it's like that, that's still very needed. There, there is also um, something that I think that's why Little Pork Chop seems very relevant to me because it's uh, technologically simple and elegant. It does one thing really well. And that's what blogging also did from a technological point of view. To me, permalink was the, was the crucial pillar of the, of the whole thing, of the distributed. Permalink was the most revolutionary thing of that page. Then there were other things because it allowed to take discrete piece of information and distribute it in a kind of, um, in a way that websites just couldn't do. Well, and, and news websites still don't link within their yeah. copy. Yeah. Because they're scared, well, and David Weinberger was right, that a good blogger links away from their stuff. So, so if I were, you know, to, to, to narrow it down what it was technologically, it was permalink. I mean, and your blog posts always, I mean, even, even bits within blog posts, yeah. you can, that, so you, you already do it well, with that, yeah. yeah. Instinctively, well, <laughs> almost. <seems> right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that, and there were other features like the blog role that also was part of the network, kind of reaching out and and because the, the another evolution evolutionary thing about blogging was that your readers were also your distributors, and that's kind of an interesting um, balance there that. Uh, allowed small uh, bloggers, uh, sort of small blogs, to have 200 readers, uh, but high quality, high connected readers could become much more distributed than, yeah. and, and more interestingly distributed it's than. Kind of amazing. It, it's kind of amazing that news organizations don't use that. Um, you know, there was a very simple idea uh, that each of them could define a community of their own news sources, which would include their competitors and would include bloggers that are sort of within their scope of interest and, you know, go aggregate them so that whenever any of them updates, you know, give it a prominent, I would put this stuff on the home page, right on the home page, because nobody goes to the home page anymore. Yeah. So it's, it, but it is a pretty valuable piece of territory. And once you're delivering flow to somebody, you've built a relationship with them and that's going to influence the way they see themselves. You know, they don't do it because, uh, because, it inter because the reporters don't like it, because it's competition for them. But ultimately, uh, the longer they delay doing it, the less relevant it's going to be to be a reporter. I mean, uh, ultimately, the, the, you know, I mean, today, the homepage of all of news is Twitter. They yeah. sort of gave that away. And, but I don't think that's irrevocable. I don't think that can't be uh, pulled back. It's, I don't think Twitter's that great an editorial product. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, consume news, they say and that, well, if it's important, it'll find me. You know, what that means is it'll show up in my uh, Twitter stream. I don't think that's true. I think that's a pretty lazy way. To, I mean, people are lazy, so it's fine. But you can make a news product that's a lot more compelling. But you'd have to, you'd have to bring in other people and other news sources. And it's just sitting there waiting for one news, or, you know, one major news organization to do this. And all of a sudden, they would instantly become the leader. I've pitched this countless times, and 
They don't want yeah. to do it. But it's a secret. I mean, this is how Yahoo became a big news source on the web. I mean, they were the first, you know, my Yahoo was the first aggregator, first RSS-based aggregator. Um, and this goes to what we David Weinberger was saying. Uh, you know, the, my way of putting it is people come back to places that send them away, right? And it's a trick, it's counterintuitive, uh, but it actually works. And at the time, um, Yahoo, I mean, the leading news sites were, um, were uh, CNN and MSNBC. Those were the big ones. And within the space of a year, there were three, and they were all equal size. They were all doing about 400 million page reads a day. And Yahoo just caught up with all of them, and NBC and CNN just wouldn't consider the idea of pointing to their competition. So you end up in this silly place where people would go to Yahoo to find out what was new on CNN. Now, that's power, right? And then, of course, CNN, uh, Yahoo pissed it all away. Uh, management change after nice. management change, and you know, so it didn't last. But if somebody were really aggressive about this, they would, they would, maybe it's a little optimistic to say that they would own news, but they certainly could make a dent and it could be much more yeah, important. Well, I guess it's, I mean, I've been pitching aggregators to some news organization for you think a few years. I mean, I'm not that, I mean, they, I'm they, not that optimistic no, anymore, Paul. No, I, I, I mean, the, the thing is that they, Feel they, they feel they are giving away <laughs> control, and they rather be in control of a sinking ship than giving fire. away control. Yeah. Well, but um, so I'm just going to say that's that's exactly the same issue that's the exactly same issue that's pertaining with it. Behave. Oi, you too. Sorry. It's, it's exactly the same issue that pertains within organisations, who are all aspiring to do this social thing. But the managers and the internal communications people, well, they're in exactly the same situation as the newspapers, where, where they're scared of losing control. They're news organizations too. Like, yeah, you know, every, right. uh, everybody in every industry is a news organization. That's right. right. Okay, there is one blogger that I read uh, very frequently. Yeah, my, my question is uh, about the tools, as Paolo said. Um, don't you think that w when we started blogging, okay, you write, you type, you have, you have a thought, and you write. And then the Twitter uh, 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 and Facebook takes you to a always now moment in which the important thing is just to write a short message, drop it, and have it leave for an hour, two hours maybe. And then uh, this becomes an attitude that inherently kills the idea of a blog. That, that requires to cool down a bit, organize your thought, think something, more like a, a diary uh, or a place where, you, where you, at the end of a day, you, you write what happened today and you try to structure your thoughts. Uh, then I see people using pictures. You know, everybody's taking pictures now. Instead of writing, they just take a picture that wants the picture to tell the whole story so you don't even have to write the 140 characters. So the question is, why don't you think that the future of blogging should become something different, like um, having a video, a personal video blog, where, where you don't have to write, uh, you don't simply have a picture, but you try to, to tell yourself or your friends a story. Because after all, the difference between the always now that is Twitter and Facebook you want to keep chunks of, of your life, we, which contains time. So what, what do you want to store after all it, it's can time? You, can you summarize that? Because I don't understand the, the overall the, point you're making. No, know. this is the point. This is exactly the point. If I have a thought, I don't want to give you a PK zip of my thought. I want to tell you what I feel. And I show you, and I want you to hear my voice, well, etc. You want to communicate, right? I mean, that's yeah. what you're saying, right? So you pick the most effective way to communicate, and um, and you you know consider what your goals are. Um, who do you want to reach? Who do you want to tell the story to? Um, you know, ad copy doesn't go on and on and on that forever. They like slogans and positioning statements, and you know. I mean, it takes a lot more work to write little copy, right? And that's sort of one of the premises of Twitter. 
some ideas are complicated and you can't fit them in 140 characters. Or um, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture. It's a, it's great. I mean, but some ideas aren't visual. So you, you they're all the same thing. I mean, they're all. I mean, blogging isn't about um, what form your expression takes. It's more that, I mean, it was one of the thoughts that you, that you said. It's an individual, right? So there's, it doesn't go through anybody else to reach the people. That's a very important thing. And on the flip side, you're the only person that's responsible for it. So there's this moment of panic when you release it because uh, you're going to be judged personally by whatever it is you've said. If it isn't that, it isn't blogging. But if it takes the form of a picture, audio, video, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a Facebook post, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing, in my opinion. Does that, I mean, I'm not sure I, that even no, addresses I mean, what you're saying. I'm just considering the fact that when you, when I blog, I don't want to say you, when, when I blog, I want to. You told me today you don't blog anymore, though. Yeah, but when I blog, if I think what I want to blog is I want really to store a piece of something that, ha that happened, not just an instinct, okay? Then I find myself that the evening I'm too lazy, I don't want to do it, I want to type complex structure. Well, you know? I think I so I, I thought that maybe, because I started from the point that, that Paolo said, maybe the tools are enabling things. Uh, but but I, I guess the successful tools are flexible tools. I mean, the, the, the type of blogging that you're describing, which is, what many people these days consider blogging, which is you know writing kind of longer pieces yeah. with a title, and it it is actually not what was blogging was to begin with. I mean, yeah. blogging to begin with was actually it, write, posting yeah. pretty it, short. In, yeah, in a way, you write. I mean, people without do. The there were no titles. Yeah. I mean, titles were. I remember when at some point they introduced titles in blogs. There was a point when lots of people were saying, "Well, I don't blog anymore. I tweet when I want to say something." I, I put it in 140 characters and it's easier and you move on. And I stopped blogging because you have a, at some point you have a feeling you've said it all and you're repeating yourself, which is obviously, you know, doesn't have to happen, but oh, so it's perfectly people are lazy. What I'm saying is perfectly fine that, I mean, you see blogging as a place where you put longer thoughts which need some, some, some could, work. Could, could I have the video? I'd like to... Sure. I want to show him something. Hold on a second. Anytime you're ready. I always say this to my computer. Anytime you're ready. <laughs> Here it is. So today, this is the blog post, the, my collective blog post for today. Do you see this guy here? Yeah. They're cute, right? And here, that's a picture, right? So it's on my blog. Here's another picture. This is um, what I call uh, James Bond Valdemarin. <laughs> That should look familiar to you. So pictures fit in blogs, no problem with that. You know, I'm trying to say here's my, here's the portrait of. So you can get to the bigger picture by clicking on it of my friend Paulo, who's one of the organizers of. And you'll see SOTN is all over the blog today, um, and it's a conference that I spoke at today. So, you know, it, there's nothing complicated about. It. Now there are some things that are linked to from here. Um, probably a few. Here's Anne. Um, she has a thing, a really incredible blog called Human System Debugging. What a concept, right? Now, look at, Anne, do you, you think that could fit in a tweet? No. I don't think so. No, that's well, we could right. copy and paste it to a little part of, <laughs> kind of. It, in a way, it took a whole lifetime to do it, right? I mean, how did you get to be the person that wrote that, you know? Um, so it's, there's all this kind of stuff um, we're involved in huge technological, political uh, gyrations right now because Feedly is down. Feedly's been knocked off the air by, um, by a distributed denial of service attack. And this raises a big issue. This is something I've been ra railing on for years, is that it makes absolutely no sense to centralize a technology that's designed to be distributed, but yet people always do it. And so maybe, Maybe this time we will actually start, develop, you know. So there's all kinds of ways of approaching this stuff, all variety, and it's only going to get more so. Because we're, we're humans, we're just incredibly good at expressing ourselves and finding new ways of expressing ourselves. But it's the expression that matters, not the way you're doing it, right? It's find the most effect. Sometimes it's just something 
in innovative or unique or interesting that nobody's ever done before that catches the attention. So you do it that way for a while and then you do it another way. So, I mean, you try it all out and it's, it's all the same thing. As long as it's you, your voice, your responsibility, then it's a blog and, and it's on the same, you know, sort of thread. Um, and and I, actually watching you just going through that there, Dave, I mean, a lot of it's and back to the point about original blogs were link blogs. Yeah. You'd, you'd be sharing a link, you'd say why you were sharing the link. I still am doing that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and yeah. then the, the, the why you were sharing it. Big, but I big stopped up. for a while, you know. I mm -hmm. stopped because Twitter, the, I, I talked about this yesterday, the combination of Twitter and Google Reader made it virtually impossible to do that. Well, that, that's, what, yeah. that's what I'm going to say, because I often quote Dave, who's in the audience here, about you, know, you can't manage knowledge, you can create a knowledge ecology. And that's what I think these things are. They're different tools that have different purposes that work for different reasons with different people mm -hmm. that we link and we point to. And, it, and it's that combination of, of linky thinking rather than static. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I got a lot of inspiration here, you know, yesterday and today. And that's what matters. Um, Sharing the, 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 yeah. I think the distributed thing is also thing is very, very sorry. important. Sorry, it's just uh, uh, to me, blogging is the last, well, is a model of uh, publishing and distribution in the open, on the open web. It is actually of the web. And that's, and that's what's frustrating about Facebook. Facebook yeah, 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 because yeah. Facebook and Twitter are trying to herd, to be the web or herd the web. But even the fact that I can't yeah. put links within posts in Facebook. I can't yeah. link yeah. from within Facebook somewhere else. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And to me, that's, that's the future. That, that's how I would like to see blogging going forward, where, where more technologies like that, whether it's publishing or distribution or anything else, it's off the web. It's either breaking things that are trying to be the web or are actually technologies that um, start from the open network. I so think that's, that, you know, that's it, it's part technology, but part is also about users finding ways of using technology. I mean, there is this amazing mimic, mimicking effect in, in the way people use uh, services and products. I mean, I remember when I started blogging, I was blogging like Dave, because I was reading, what, I was looking at what he was doing, and suddenly, you know, you try to structure short posts without titles, regardless of the, of the tools. Uh, I've, I've, I've been working on several platforms lately, and it's amazing how you start up this empty thing, and uh, you get the first user who creates a piece of content based on what they think that makes sense, and the next one will create something similar to the first, and then it will just continue. So, you know, you start posting some type of content, you start using uh, even stuff like hashtags were completely user-created, because they were actually trying to route around b lack of features in, in, uh, in um, Twitter. Any other thoughts? I, mean, I, I, I see you bloggers. There's Dave over there. I'm not, I'm not sure why you're all talking about all of this as if all of this stuff was in the past. I think it's just settled down. I mean, it used to be blogs was the only way by which people communicate, so you had trivial blogs, you had serious blogs. Blogs have now become reflective thinking. Yeah, a more limited number of bloggers, and the, you know, the, the very fast posting stuff has gone to Facebook or to Twitter. So, yeah, so the medium is, stable, is stabilized in different ways. What we haven't got is an integrative mechanism, and we're still confined to fairly primitive forms of metadata to link and connect. Yep. Right? But I, I think you know, this isn't about the past. I actually think you and you should blog more and use Facebook less. But well, I, well I, do, I do both. Yeah, I know, the, po the point is that the blog is a reflect, you put effort into a blog. I think these days, if people read the blog, they expect, like the one you just showed, somebody to put some thought in, some structure. It's no longer the sort of throw stuff out casually. That's what you do in Facebook. But no, it's it also, not. oh, no, it's not. We want a single chords? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think you're sort of, again, tying the, the nature of the content with the nature of the platform. I don't think that's necessarily the case that I think you can, you can use different platforms in diff, different ways. You can write short blogs, you can write long blogs, you can write long Facebook posts, you can write short Facebook posts. And the restrictions of the environment shape the content. So we weren't posting short tweet level, tweet like blog posts because Google Reader choked on them. And now Google Reader's gone. So we don't have to worry about Google Reader choking on it anymore. And I know I'm talking about the past, but now I'm going to talk about the future, okay? All it takes is breaking down one little wall 
and all of a sudden you can start putting your Facebook posts on your blog. And could that wall be broken down? Sure, technically it could be. So there's, you know, some years long skirts are in fashion and some years short skirts are in fashion. You know, people assume, like in another context, that we're always only going to be use, using mobile phones, mobile devices to use the web, right? But what happens five years from now when the kids discover, oh my God, these things could have mega-sized screens. In other words, laptops. You know, it could all go cyclic. I mean, it always does go cyclic. So it's never going to stay put. It's never going to stay in one place. It's maybe, always going to be changing. Maybe it's more about meeting the expectations of the, of the reader in the sense that if people expect shorter, more ephemeral posts on Facebook and haven't got the time or the inclination to read blog posts, then you, you write the longer posts where that's more effective or more appropriate. And it's back to what you were saying, Adriana, about it's just us as individuals punting stuff out into the network. There's no reason why people would read it other than whatever value we can add by doing so. And so that's the, the inclination is to try and make it valuable. Yeah. Yes. Yes, because you haven't got advertising and more promotion budget like media companies. But you, I mean, when I realized that um, individual can achieve better exposure than a media company, that, that is phenomenal. That, that was kind of, um, it sort of even surpasses revolutionary. Because revolutionary often means destroying what already exists and building something in the ashes of that. Now, that was, this was bypass, this was building an alternative way of, of doing what before was one of the most expensive activities. So I think um, we need more of that. We need more alternatives to, let's say, Facebook or Twitter. I mean, I, I don't like Facebook, but I would never stop anyone from using it because it provides utility. It, until there is a better or at least equal alternative, really, you know, what... I, I like what, Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah. I don't like it because it crowds out mental models of what, how it could be. That's, that's all. I mean, I don't hate it as a, I just don't like what it stands for and it becomes, uh, it crowds out what alternatives, and then, you know, there are people like you building various alternatives in that, and there are other, like diaspora and various other attempts. Unfortunately, they were trying to build a distributed Facebook. They were not trying to do something different. They were just trying to add the goodness of openness and open source, but bolted on what might not be actually the right model in the first place. So do yeah. you think that since you, since you have been following, of course, what all these companies do and uh, you, are, you have a ex very long experience, how likely it is that uh, in a, some short term Facebook will open up and, and uh, kind of... Uh, I, I don't have any insight into that. I mean... No, no, but I mean, do you think it's likely for it to happen? I mean, it, we were talking the other I day... I would here. like it to happen. I mean, okay. if that's what you're asking, I mean, it would be interesting. I don't see why they shouldn't, but, you know, big companies are mysteries. You know, who knows how they really operate? So, I mean, you might ask the folks here what they think. I mean, I think it would be just as valid. I don't have any insight there. Okay. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions, idea? Something that you want to discuss? Yeah. What do you all think about Secret? Has anybody here used Secret? Uh, I don't no? even think they released it in Italy yet. Oh, it's not released? Yes, it no, is. It is not yet. Oh, it is. I, I used it from here. I use Secret. I, I, no, I, I have it too, but I don't know if you it's can't in get the onto Apple. it. I don't know. I don't know if it's in the Italian Apple Store. I mean, what happens if? Oh, it's not in the Apple Store. Well, I um, does anybody here in Italy use Secret? You've used it. What, what is Secret? Okay, okay, that's a good question. Um, well, Sorry, I asked, "What is Secret?" I've never heard of it. Oh, You've never heard of it. Wow. <laughs> Because it could have come up in the last panel, it, it would. Have, I'll, I'll explain what it is. I will, I, um, but I have to think about this because I've never had to explain what it is. Um, you can. It's a. You could think of it as sort of. It's like a Facebook. Okay? Oh, it's an app that you. You write these phone. beautiful little posts. One of the things that's great about it is that the posts are very short and colorful and easy. And it only works on mobile devices. You type in something, but nobody knows who you are. 
you're anonymous. And people can reply, your friends can reply. They know who you are to the extent that they know, they, they ask to have access to your Gmail account. Or, and they read, the, they somehow connect you to the people who you email with. They claim they throw that information away. And your friends see what you write, and if they like it, then it gets broader distribution. So they've come up with some sort of heuristic that distributes these ideas f farther than just amongst your friends. And so the idea is that you, you, it's not you, I forget what the guy said in the last session, but it's, you're not out there exposed in public. You can post an idea or you could talk about, you could talk about things that aren't good news. You could say something really crazy happened in my life and this is what it is, and people could trash you, which they don't do a lot, which a lot of people, when they first heard about this, thought, oh, it's just gonna be all flames, but it's not. Um, but more than that, you can put out an idea that you never would put out in public because you wouldn't want your name attached to it. So all kinds of politically incorrect things show up there, which is what, the reason why I like it, because you know we're, we're, things get ever more constricted in the online world because you don't want to have to deal with the, the backlash that comes from having an idea that you know you think's perfectly reasonable but for whatever reason the world doesn't like it. So I think it changes stuff. Well, I, I was going to ask you, I mean it sort of relates that you were commenting the other day that not everybody wants to or could be a blogger and, and in a sense secret is partly an answer to some of the reasons why might it would they be interesting not. to ask the people that use it if they also blog. Mm. But, you know, I, maybe, and now, now that I've said that publicly, if I ask it in secret, they're all <laughs> going to know that it's me. So I'm not going to do I didn't post anything from here because there are Italians using it, okay? There are, you see, when I'm here in Italy, I see posts from Italy. <laughs> so, yeah, there are people using it. They, uh, it, I think it just started here, so. Okay. I don't know. I don't think I've done it justice. It's a very interesting product. I think it's going to be a big hit. I think it's going to be huge. If I could buy stock in Secret, I would buy it. Well, it's funny because I, I did get access to it and I played with it for about 10 minutes and then deleted my account. I, I hear that from a lot of people. Yeah. Why did you do that? Because I would rather aspire to having these conversations in open. And it's, it, it's part of this thing about privacy. Wow. That the more we close down and are concerned about protecting our privacy, the less chance there are, chances there are of us collectively sorting out the problems we have to sort out. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever had an idea that you wanted to post on Facebook but didn't because you felt you would bring on a lot of grief to yourself for doing it? I posted a post about feeling incredibly conservative with a small c, the more exposure I got. So the more public I get, the more I'm aware of the consequences of me writing stuff. And? But I make myself, I keep pushing myself to be as open as I can because I believe in doing so. In I show words, more people. The, the that, answer is yes. You have not posted. There are times when you've not posted. Oh, things but then, well, yeah, because but Because you would get in trouble for doing it. Well, but the flip side of that is just because you've got a blog doesn't mean you get verbal diarrhea. You don't have to write about everything all the time. No, but it would be interesting to know what people really think. That's, yes. that's, the, that's, that's right, and that's my point. That's, that's my concern about secret. Because you, no, but that's the promise of secret, is that I might actually hear what you really think. But I don't notice you. What? But I don't notice you. you there's no relationship. That's why you might hear what I really think. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly why you might. Because but it doesn't, but it doesn't I, as, I stick my neck out. I've been sticking my neck out on the net for, oh, 30 years, right? So I'm perfectly well aware what, hap what the risks are, and I get more and more closed off all the time. Yeah. I mean, an innocent comment that is not a person such as myself is not supposed to make brings all kinds of hell on me. And I okay, do it so, so, so is it better to try and all learn how to deal with that or is it better to hide and pretend it's not possible? The only way to deal with it is to not do it and, and, or to pick your battles very carefully. It's just simply not worth the trouble. They, they get people fired, you know. I mean, if I ever want to do business deals, I can't do say the things that I would like to say because, well, because the penalty for being politically incorrect, you know, there's this thing that goes around the net that says you have freedom of speech, but you also have the, 
we can also get you fired for saying what okay, you so say. That, well, that's, that, that's also a freedom, you so know. Are you uh, saying them? On, are you saying them on, on secrets? I'm sorry. No, you no. Theor theoretically, you can't get fired for things you say. Oh, on but secret. I mean, are you? Because you're not saying them on your blog, on your on Twitter account. But are you saying the, those things on on secret? Sometimes. Because we are friends, so. I'll, I'll <laughs> but that. But that. But, uh, but, but that, you I'll, wouldn't I'll know it's me, Paolo. No, but I. Could, I mean, you, although you have to be careful about that because exactly I have I a friend who only has one friend who lives in New York. Okay. Uh, I don't know and that she, many people. She in is New York. uncanny at telling me, Dave. I think that was you, and yeah, I, I never I guess, it. I guess it, if on my secret I see a post from a friend from New York, it's likely me, good right? That but just, just that's why it isn't any kind of a panacea. It doesn't give you complete freedom. I would never say anything that I felt could get me into legal trouble, mm -hmm. um, because I think that they could break that any time they want. The government but, could yeah. get in there and isn't, do it. Isn't it's that, not for that. Isn't that argument perilously close to the one about teenagers shouldn't have photographs of themselves drunk on Facebook because a future employer might not employ them? Well, the theory is here you would, your future employer would have no way of knowing Yeah, but, no, but what, what I'm saying is, if as a society we give up on trying to be brave enough to say what we think in public, and we all descend into little secret enclaves like secret. Well, you're dreaming because we have given up on that. Absolutely have. You're crazy if you post I'm the- crazy. No, you're not. I read you, your stuff on Facebook. I mean, you, you stay within the same confines that the rest of us do. Yeah. I have never seen you, I've never seen something from you that I would say, oh my God, this guy can never be hired again. And you can't afford to do that. You have a family to support, right? I mean, what would happen to you if you said something that was so controversial that hundreds of thousands of people were trying to get you fired? You know they would get you fired. Yeah, I'm not saying I say... Nobody would employ you if you became radioactive. No, but I'm not saying that... The inclin my inclination is to be as open, to push for openness, to, to try to model, to be brave and try and model openness as far as I feel comfortable rather than give how, up. How long will you do that? In other words, haven't we done this experiment long enough to know that we have hit certain boundaries and that we're never going to get over those boundaries? Well, I think... I believe we have. I, mean, I, don't think, I think history is full of ebb and flow of openness and closeness in different societies and different cu right. cultural settings. Right, but which way do you think we're going now? I worry that we're closing down. At a let's, time when we should be opening up. Let's take the worry up. part out of it. We are closing down. We have, we, what have we learned in the last year about the true nature of the net? I mean, you, this is the state of the net, right? In the, you, between the last time you did this conference and today, we learned about what the NSA is doing. The state yep. of the net is a lot more awful than you knew last year, right? Yep. Absolutely. So, this, is very, this is actually fascinating because it's basically reputation management for the individual. So we, we have done what institutions have been able to do, were only able to do before blogging and now instead of breaking the model and pushing the boundaries we are stuck with the same problems institutions have with reputation management so so we, we haven't really fundamentally changed it, it's the, the it's worse the it's boundaries. worse because every one of us is like a presidential candidate in other words we're trying to avoid and i resist that with well, I, I blow through that one whenever I possibly can. As look, I say, look, I'm not running for president. So you know what? You could try to get people not to vote for me, but they're never going to get a chance to vote for me. I'm not running for anything, so stop applying those rules to me. But it doesn't work. They still try to do it. And, you know. Well, can we maybe put it another way, because you were saying if I posted everything I thought people wouldn't employ me, equally they employ me for knowing what I, partly because they know what I think, and what I think is different from them. So if I end up in a situation where I'm too scared to say boo to go say nothing, become like everybody else, then we all become undifferentiated and there's no onus on somebody to well, pick then you. I think you're probably not the right person to ask about this because in order to, to keep your reputation for doing what you're doing, you have to say the kinds of things you just said. That but you're it, in but favor it, but of, I would argue that that's true in any business. People have to say what right, right. I mean, you wouldn't, nobody would ask you what you think if you didn't feel that everybody should be open on the web. This is, this is how you make a living, right? And so... so no, because I, I think in business, businesses go wrong because people don't talk about what they're doing, why they're doing it, what I works, agree. what doesn't. And any incremental improvement in their willingness to do so right. is a good thing. A great example of that is the Tylenol, Tylenol scare 
in the early 80s when, you know, they are a classic example of how you want to deal with a crisis by being completely open. Don't you agree? I mean, I, they withdrew all their products. They were completely open about the danger with their product. They made sure that there was no more, there would be no more casualties from it. And, I've, and I always see companies, often see companies, do exactly the opposite. Pretend there's no problem, try to you know, blow smoke up everybody's you know what, and you know, with very disastrous effects. So that's what you counsel, right? Is to be upfront and straight and admit to problems. Yeah, and paradoxically, Johnson and Johnson had another problem a few years ago, and it handled it the opposite way. Which, to one, which problem? It was uh, product recall. And they did a product recall, which was under the table, where the employees right. were told to come and you know, buy out things from pharmacies rather than do official recall. They did exactly the opposite. That's terrible. It's so it bad. is terrible. I mean, that, here there was a company that so set they can't the, die down on Tylenol for for decades, which they have been doing until you know it, they can't anymore. But yes, you're right. The, but the, there's one one. Yeah, one thing. One last thing. Yeah, one, Are we okay. out of time? No. Oh, yeah. yeah we're, just, you know, when you <laughs> we're just getting interested. <laughs> no. um, yeah, well, I mean, we, I guess we have the place for eight more hours, but probably there were not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, the whole, let's hear the last question and wrap this up. Yeah. When it comes to reputation management, blogging had one advantage. You could define your own identity. If you were brave enough, you could, you know, as I said this morning, you don't, who needs an ism, i.e. belonging to kind of movement when you can actually define what your beliefs in context continuously. Now, that's not addressing the issue of trying to make a living and be, you know, but it is in political blogging, it definitely worked that, you know, so, what, what I wanted to say was actually a comment, not a question. So, you know, if you would forgive that. No, um, no. So, um, I think that you know, what you said about openness and closeness, I think, is, is, is important, but I think it's also not unidimensional because how open you are versus how closed you are is sort of topic dependent and depends on your own sort of personal totally. um, metrics for, for you know, what, what your tolerance for risk and, your, your, and the potential benefit. Totally agree. And so for me, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of advice that says don't say anything medical online. Don't talk about your genetics. Don't talk about your medications because you know, in the future you can get you know, screwed over by insurance. And when I figured out the nightshade thing, I realized that I had to come public about that in order to help my constituency, which is the people who also have the problem and don't know it yet. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Paula, do you have any closing comments for us about this year's state of the net? Well, we are, we are, we are, I, I'm inviting my partners now and we will work on so, but anyway, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you.